Rick, in private equity, one of the really difficult value-added tasks is to decide how you're going to get your returns. In the Sally's case, it was one of the early cases where so much of the return came from revenue enhancement as opposed to margin improvement or reduction of structured costs. Can you tell us a little bit about what gave you the courage to make this investment? You know, historically, this has been a firm that has focused on margin enhancement as a driver of return. And Sally, back in 2006, was one of our first investments where we were going to be dependent on revenue growth. And so taking the same discipline to analyzing our ability to drive revenue growth as we have taken to analyzing margin improvement was a change. And getting everybody comfortable that we understood the levers of revenue growth and we were confident in our ability to impact and influence those drivers to change the relationship with the core customer base here, to take share, um, and to change what historically had been a relatively low growth, low organic growth business into one that was growing closer to low double digits uh, was, a, was a leap of faith for us. And so this was maybe our first, and I have to go back and think through the others that we did that with back then, but this was maybe our first where, where revenue was the driver. There wasn't a big margin play here. It wasn't that we were going to take operating margins from 10 to 18. It was that we were going to move operating margins slightly, but we were going to take the growth rate up from an organic growth rate, if I remember right, was 2 or 3 percent to, to 9 or 10 percent. And so the levers of growth here, particularly around getting the core customers to, to uh, come to the store more often uh, and to spend more on their basket because of the market position that the business had, uh, took a different level of analysis than we were used to. And so that was a, that was a change. I think, you know, obviously here with, with Sally, um, the, the key drivers of growth in, in any retail business are your same store sales and the ability to grow same store sales. And that analysis, I think, made us as a team comfortable that we could change the trajectory of that growth rate because of uh, the, our belief that the, the, both the product mix in the stores was unique and nobody else had it, and that the, we, liked, we used to say that the, the core Sally customer was promiscuous and that she would shop in quite a few different retail outlets for a whole variety of different things, and we could be more of a, of a wholesome supplier. We thought we could grow that that relationship and take her shopping pattern from, I don't remember exactly, but maybe it was two times a year to four times a year. Uh, and then second, of course, is, is new stores. And we thought the new store opportunity was very significant uh, in Sally's store base. Uh, and then the third piece here, e-commerce was, was starting for Sally, but was relatively small back in 06. The third piece was really the professional distribution business. Uh, and obviously that created some of our issues in the early days of the investment, but the, the business that had become, before we bought it, really the dominant distributor of professional beauty supplies had an enormous growth opportunity in adding brands beyond uh, the brands that had been dependent on historically, which have now been, had, that had then been acquired mostly by L'Oreal. Uh, and so the thought there was investing in the sales force, professionalizing the sales force, and continuing to work on the store base would allow us to grow that. And so that combination, I think, got us ultimately comfortable. Uh, and spent, we spent a lot of time on that as a team and obviously as a firm. And if I look back now, 11, 10 or 11 years later, growth, to, revenue growth has become the primary driver of quite a few of our most successful investments, particularly consumer-facing investments and our healthcare investments. Everyone in private equity knows that Deriving returns from increasing revenue is a tougher task than from margin improvement. What comforted you knowing that 10% growth trend at Sally's through acquisition now needed to be accelerated organically to maximize uh, the return here? What we've concluded in our business is that the, the, the key drivers of success, one, one are, is finding unique transactions, so solution capital. Uh, has been a very unique a aspect for our business. Half of our deals have been in some form of partnership. So we've been able to find those unique transactions uh, where others either don't have an opportunity to participate or don't see what we see. And then second, it is about what can we do with the business that others can't do. Can we? Because we're in the business of driving outsized returns. So we're still targeting 
returns that are higher than most others in the industry. To do that, either we have to find unique opportunities that others don't see, or we have to be able to be better at execution. And quite frankly, um, outsized returns in our business have more often come from outsized sales growth than from other aspects. And so, uh, and I look at, um, and again, particularly around our consumer, retail consumer and healthcare investments, we've been able to invest in revenue growth initiatives that have taken the growth rates of those businesses up significantly. And we've been able to invest behind those. And a, a big transition for our firm uh, has been an ability to analyze revenue growth with the same rigor, potential revenue growth with the same rigor as we do operating improvement initiatives. And uh, that's an ability to understand the marketplace, market share, market share gain opportunity, uh, and, it, and, and the, the, a variety of, and the, all businesses are different, but where we could invest to change the nature of the revenue growth. The management team question, a tough transformation, the L'Oreal bombshell, a significant, maybe three, four times higher growth rate organically. That's a real challenge for any team. Did this team as a subsidiary of the parent company represent a challenge? or a threat to your objective? Well, we were, we were quite concerned about the management team that we were inheriting at Sally. So um, Gary Winterhalter and his team had been running a subsidiary of a public company, never run a public company. We were intending to transform the business quite significantly, both from a, as we discussed, revenue uh, growth standpoint, uh, international expansion standpoint, et cetera, to make the business significantly larger. And so um, we weren't sure if Gary and his team could do the job. Uh, obviously, we're heavily dependent in this case on, on Jim Burgess, one of our operating partners. We always are dependent on an operating partner to help us execute and evaluate the team as, as we go. Turned out uh, that Gary was the right um, guy at the right time. I think the expertise he had in the beauty business was unique, and this is a unique business, and understanding what um, ultimately, he was willing uh, from, from the starting point where we thought he may not be and where he was a little bit resistant to change. He was, at the end of the day, he opened up and was quite open to change. We brought in a whole slew of new people into the business to drive the variety of initiatives around uh, uh, our CRM, which is a big driver of revenue growth, our customer relationship management system. Uh, on the acquisition side, we brought in a, a, an executive to help us with that. We brought in a new executive to run Sally Beauty. Uh, we promoted an executive to run the Beauty Systems Group business. So we surrounded Gary with a, a set of new executives that help us to help us execute. But I would say um, it's not often that you can find a team, a full team, that's running a subsidiary and make them a successful team in a standalone he privately held business or, or ultimately publicly held business. So uh, Gary was, the other thing I would say is we were not prepared to deal with the L'Oreal situation very well. And so we certainly didn't expect to have the L'Oreal crisis that we had. We knew the biggest risk in the business we were investing in was that 30%, 37, 36 or 37 percent of our product came from, came from L'Oreal. And we knew there was a difficult relationship there. Obviously, we bought the business and the situation became more difficult. I would say um, we were unprepared to deal with it. Gary was more prepared, and so Gary was more confident in the company's ability to withstand the L'Oreal loss than we were prepared to understand, I guess. Ultimately, we all got there, but I think having a team that understood the dynamics of the marketplace was extremely important to helping us get through that first couple of years. A famous quote from Jim Burgess, never waste a good crisis. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. We often use crisis situations um, to, to promote uh, faster transformations and more change. And the crisis that L'Oreal set off drove us to improve the business at a much faster rate and, and opened Gary and team up to, we need help. How are we gonna go get this right? What do we need to do with our sales force? How are we gonna respond to, to the L'Oreal change. And I think the crisis at Sally probably accelerated the improvement there by a couple of years. The L'Oreal shocker. At the time of the case, as a young principal, on a track for partnership, 
Describe the feelings you had when the French firm pulled the distribution plug in the eastern region. One of the unique attributes of our business is that we have operating partners. And in this case, when the L'Oreal crisis hit us, having somebody with the experience that Jim Burgess had, his ability to be calm in the, in the, in the eye of the storm, uh, create a crisis for the organization, but help us march through it was, it was enormously helpful. Without, without Jim, this would have been nearly an impossible task because you know, we're a bunch of financial guys running around trying to help a management team deal with the crisis that they were unprepared to deal with.